Have you ever wondered how gardeners create hybrid plants or change the variety of existing trees? The secret lies in a technique called grafting. Grafting, an age-old practice that dates back 4,000 years to ancient China and Mesopotamia, is a horticultural technique where parts from two or more plants are joined together, allowing them to grow as one. The top part, or scion, of one plant grows on the root system, or rootstock, of another. This method is widely used in the world of horticulture, allowing us to create hybrid plants, change the variety of existing trees, and propagate species that are difficult to root. Although it might sound like a complex process, with a little understanding and the right tools, anyone can attempt grafting. Let's delve into the fascinating world of grafting and explore the different types, starting from the simplest. The first and one of the simplest forms of grafting is cleft grafting. This technique is a gardener's go-to for top-working both flowering and fruiting trees such as apples, cherries, pears, and peaches, especially when aiming to change varieties. It's also particularly useful for propagating certain types of camellias that prove difficult to root. This method is usually performed during the winter and early spring, when both the scion and rootstock are still dormant. The rootstock, which should be straight-grained and between 1 to 4 inches in diameter, is prepared by sawing off with a clean, smooth cut perpendicular to the main axis of the stem to be grafted. A split or cleft is then made through the center of the stalk and down 2 to 3 inches, using a clefting tool wedge and a mallet. Moving on to the scion, which is ideally about a quarter inch in diameter and long enough to have at least three buds. The scion is prepared by making two opposing smooth tapered cuts, one to two inches long toward the basal end. The side with the lowest bud is cut slightly thicker than the opposite side. Now comes the critical part, inserting the scion. One scion is inserted at each end of the cleft with the wider side of the wedge facing outward. It's crucial that the cambium of each scion contacts the cambium of the rootstock. Once the scions are in place, the clefting tool is removed so that the rootstock can close. The pressure from the rootstock itself will hold the scions in place. To secure the graft, all cut surfaces are thoroughly sealed with grafting wax or grafting paint to keep out water and prevent drying. The temperature of the grafting wax is pivotal. It must be hot enough to flow, but not so hot as to kill plant tissue. Paint-like sealants have become more popular recently as they are easier to use and require no heating. Although it's a simple process, cleft grafting requires precision and care. Now, let's move on to a slightly more complex type of grafting. Next up on our grafting journey is bark grafting. This technique, primarily used to top work flowering and fruiting trees, offers a different approach compared to cleft grafting. Bark grafting is often chosen when the rootstock is too thick for other grafting methods, allowing the gardener to work with larger, more mature trees. Let's delve into the process. The preparation begins with the selection of your scion. Just like in cleft grafting, your scion should be straight and about a quarter inch in diameter, bearing at least three buds. Remember, the scion is the part that will grow into the new tree, so choose wisely. Now let's talk about how to prepare the rootstock. First, make a clean horizontal cut across the rootstock. This is where your scion will be inserted. Following this, make a vertical cut down into the rootstock, creating a small flap of bark. This little pocket is where your scion will snugly fit. Next, it's time to prepare your scion. Sharpen one end of your scion into a wedge shape. This will make it easier to insert into the rootstock. It's important to ensure your tools are clean and sharp to avoid causing unnecessary damage to the plant tissue. Now for the exciting part, inserting the scion. Slide the sharpened end of the scion under the flap you've created in the rootstock. Make sure the cambium layers that's the layer between the wood and the bark of both the scion and the rootstock are touching this is crucial for the graft to take successfully finally secure your graft this can be done by tightly wrapping the graft area with grafting tape or rubber bands this keeps the scion in place and helps to maintain the all-important contact between the cambium layers then seal all the cut surfaces with grafting wax or grafting paint to prevent drying and protect the graft from the elements Bark grafting, though a bit more complex, offers its own unique advantages. Ready for more? Let's continue our journey. As we delve deeper into the world of grafting, 
the techniques become more complex and specialized. Grafting is a world of endless possibilities, with techniques that range from simple to intricate. Beyond the basic cleft and bark grafts, there are myriad methods that experienced gardeners and professionals employ to create fascinating plant combinations. Take the whip and tongue graft, for instance. This technique is often used for joining pieces of similar size, where the scion and the rootstock are cut at matching angles to create a tongue and whip. These are then interlocked, creating a strong and secure union. The whip and tongue method is particularly useful when grafting deciduous fruit trees and is known for its high success rate. Next, let's talk about approach grafting, or inosculation. This technique involves bringing two living plants together, allowing them to grow in unison until they eventually fuse. The process can take several months, but the result is a naturally strong graft. Approach grafting is frequently used in bonsai and topiary arts, where precision and patience are key. Another advanced grafting technique is the side veneer graft. This method is often used for conifers and difficult to graft species. In this method, the scion is grafted onto the side of the rootstock rather than the top. The result is a plant that benefits from the strength of a mature root system while showcasing the characteristics of the grafted scion. And let's not forget the bud grafting or budding, a method wherein a single bud is used as the scion instead of a stem section. This technique is commonly used in fruit tree propagation and rose grafting. It's a less invasive technique and often has a high success rate. These are just a few examples of the more advanced grafting techniques out there. Each method requires a unique set of skills and knowledge, further proving that grafting is as much an art as it is a science. These advanced techniques showcase the true artistry and science behind grafting. Now, let's summarize everything we've learned. Grafting is an age-old technique that continues to play a crucial role in horticulture today. This practice, with roots dating back 4,000 years to the ancient civilizations of China and Mesopotamia, is a testament to the enduring power of human ingenuity and our ability to shape the natural world for our needs. So let's recap the journey we've been on today. We began by defining grafting, a horticultural technique that joins parts from two or more plants, so they appear to grow as a single plant. This is achieved by having the upper part, known as the scion, from one plant grow on the root system or rootstock of another plant. From there, we explored the different types of grafts, starting with cleft grafting. This simple and popular method is often used to top work flowering and fruiting trees, such as apples, cherries, pears, and peaches. It's also used to propagate varieties of camellias that are difficult to root. We delved into the preparation of the rootstock and scion and the careful process of inserting the scion and securing the graft. Moving on, we discussed bark grafting, a technique primarily used to top work flowering and fruiting trees. Unlike cleft grafting, bark grafting allows for a different approach, offering a unique method to those who practice it. We then ventured into more complex grafting techniques, highlighting the diversity and adaptability of this practice. Each technique has its own unique set of steps and considerations, but all share the same goal, to create a single plant from multiple parts enhancing its characteristics and productivity. Grafting is not just about combining parts of different plants, it's a science, an art, and a craft. It requires knowledge, patience, and a delicate hand. Each type of graft has its own specific use, its own benefits, and its own challenges. But the end result is always a plant that is more than the sum of its parts, a plant that is a testament to the power of horticultural ingenuity. Grafting can be used to create new varieties of plants, to save old varieties from extinction, to make plants more resistant to diseases, and even to create artistic plant formations. It's a practice that can be as practical or as creative as you want it to be. Whether you're a budding gardener or a seasoned professional, understanding and mastering grafting can open up a world of possibilities. It can allow you to create unique plants, save your favorite varieties, and even transform your garden into a living work of art. Thank you for joining us on this grafting journey. We hope that you found it informative and inspiring. Remember, the world of grafting is wide and varied, and there's always more to learn. So, keep exploring, keep experimenting, 
and most importantly, keep growing. Until next time, happy gardening!